everybody to episode 10 of the Josh cast the podcast that believes that standing for anybody is a crime that should be punishable by death I am your host Josh uh, today's a special episode we finally made it to the big 10 no not the conference the episode uh, I wanted Carson here for this episode just to celebrate the monument but once again he's ducking me well I guess it, he doesn't have a choice for this one because it's with a heavy heart that I announced that Carson has passed away he uh, he was killed from being, being a dream stan. Uh, I get, it's not that he was killed by being a dream stan. It's just that, well, here's here's the situation, right? Him and I were talking, right? And he, he just does not stop talking about dream at all. It's really annoying. And I told him, like, hey, man, you know all of his, like, manhunt videos are sketches, right? Like, they're staged. They're not, they're not uh, authentic. And he got really mad, and there was a lot of, a lot of slurs said from him, a lot of horrible things. I'm not going to repeat any of them because this is, you know, a professional podcast. But we we realized that Carson was too far gone. He was too far in the dream stand, the standness. All he could talk about was dream. Everything he did was dream. He had a, like a 10 foot tall uh, cutout, like a fat head, but it's of dreams Minecraft character. And he, he like worships it every night he says this weird prayer and does this ritual for it it's really weird but anyways Carson was too far down the path of the dream stand so we unfortunately had to have him put down it it's with a heavy heart that I say that but he he's in a better place now hopefully now he's finally well and not stuck in this this hellhole that he was living in denial in about being a dream stand he needed help because nobody who's a dream stan is well in the head, you know? So I hope he's better now. I'm, we know he is, but Carson, we miss you, man. And we, we hope, we just hope that you're better wherever you're at. We hope you're in a better place. Uh, speaking of being a dream stan, that's one thing I've never really understood is how can anyone be a stan for anyone? I guess like I understand being like, a diehard fan of something like I'm a diehard fan of Vince Wilfork. That's right, the greatest football player to ever live. But if Vince like fucking tells me to jump off a cliff or fucking stab somebody, I'm not gonna go stab somebody or do any of that. Like, yeah, I'm a fan of his, but I'm not like obsessive, which is what being a stan is. For anyone who doesn't know what a stan is, it's a slang term used to describe like a super obsessive fan somebody who is very excessive in their support of something or someone to the point of just absurdity where it's like the only thing they could talk about like carson and dream like these fucking minecrafters man they gotta stop but i don't like understand how anyone can be a stan for anybody like i don't know I don't even know how to describe it. It's just this weird emotion that I that I feel like confusion and just depression that I feel when I think of these people whose sole personality is based around like enjoying somebody to the point of obsession. Like these fucking dream stands, man. If Dream fucking told somebody or told his fans like, hey, you should go fucking stab your neighbor. And then jump off a cliff saying, Hail Hydra. You would see in the news of thousands of fucking kids doing this. Fucking murdering somebody. And then jumping off a cliff while saying, Hail Hydra. Because for these people who are fucking dream stands, they will do fucking whatever he says. And it's not just dream stands. It's really anybody who stands for anyone. Like, they are just so obsessive of this person. And the only reality they see is just with them. It just, it's insane. To me, I don't get, I don't get it. I don't get, like, how do you put, I guess, all of your chips of happiness on one person to the point where you let them dictate your interests, dictate your hobbies and whatnot. It just baffles me. I don't get it. Like, I didn't think people could really be that much of a sheep, but you know, I, you know, I, take, I take that back. There are cults out there. 
with people who are even worse. But still, I just don't get that. I don't get like how you like come to the point where I'm not I'm not judging anybody who might be considered a stan of something. But how I'm just genuinely curious, how does it get to the point where you are so obsessive over something to where you let that thing dictate your life and your interest and who you associate with just out of interest, I guess. Cause I know there's things like drugs that people get addicted to, but I'm not, I'm not talking about like that. Like when you stand for somebody, it's because of a choice. Like you can join any time and stand for somebody or you can leave anytime you want. Like, so you're there on a choice and I don't get that. I really don't get that. I, I wish I understood it. It's definitely something I wish I could understand, but I just don't. And, you know, I guess if it was that easy to understand, we could have been more help for Carson in his, in his times. But, you know, I, I hope I never have to put down my friend again. That was really weird for me, especially taking him to the vet because we didn't take him to like the doctor's office. We just took him to the vet because I couldn't think of anything else. That's just where me and the boys thought. That's where you have somebody put down. We just took him in. Cars was in his kennel, his little portable kennel, and he was he was very agitated. He just kept saying saying like dream, dream save me and whatnot. It was it was really weird. But we took him to the vet and when we explained the situation, they're at first like, Oh, well, we can't we can't do that here. That's actually really messed up that you would bring him here and have us do this to him but then we further explain the situation like hey man this this guy's a dream stand when i told him that the videos were staged he tried to assault me and it took like four people to pull him off me carson's actually really strong like and but yeah when we further explained the situation they were like oh yeah you know we understand now where you're coming from and why this is an issue so we'll help you out this one time and they brought him they brought him in the back and we all said our final goodbyes to him and he just kept quoting dream he just kept saying come here george come here george and it was heartbreaking cuz we know he would be chasing his own georges in up in heaven which is where he probably went to but again yeah we just hope carson's in a better place and shout outs to the vet you know they were great they were they were very understanding of our situation and realized that we had to make the world a better place like, we love Carson, me and the boys, man. We've been through a lot with him. And, again, we miss him, but it was just time, you know? You just had to take him around back. Unfortunately, we didn't have a barn or, you know, a gun worthy of putting down one of the boys, putting them out of their misery. So we, we went to the next vet's best thing and took him to the vet. So, yeah, I don't get why people stand for people. On a serious note, I don't get why people stand for people. I really would like to like read a research paper or something explaining like how mentally we cling on to someone or something so much that it just controls our life. I know there's probably like research papers on that somewhere. Probably not on the topic of like standing just because that's a relatively new term from back in 2007 I think it was in an Eminem song or something if I remember that right but I know there are like plenty of uh, psychology papers that discuss and talk about uh, mental obsessions over things and so I should I really want to read up on that I'm gonna I'm gonna do that that that, that interests me because I'd like to know more of how it just gets to that point where because I'm telling you guys, like, if Dream told his fans to fucking go and stab their neighbor, a ton of people would fucking do it. Because their whole life just revolves around Dream. And again, it's not just Dream that people stand over. There's a lot of other people. But it, there are people who just put all their happiness chips on one hand. And I don't get it. But I want to get it. Like, I don't know. Also, uh... An update in the sporting world. The Cincinnati Bengals have defeated the Kansas City Chiefs to advance to the fucking Super Bowl. 
Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. The Cincinnati Bengals in two years went from the worst overall team in the NFL. They drafted Joe Burrow. They still kind of sucked. Then they fucking draft Jamar Chase. And here we are now in 2022 and the fucking Bengals are going to the Super Bowl. Amazing. Amazing. Like, the whole country rejoices right now. Like, I'm not a Bengals fan. I'm a Texans fan. I love my Texans. These are tough times, but we push through. But, oh my God, the whole country is celebrating. Myself included for the Bengals win. Because that means that Jackson Mahomes doesn't get to go to the Super Bowl and do fucking dumb shit things like whatever, like dance on someone's memorial. Like, because, oh my God, fuck Jackson Mahomes. Like, seriously, how how can, I don't get how anyone can be a supporter of the Chiefs when you have Patrick Mahomes' wife, whose name I'm blanking on, and Jackson Mahomes just being the most obnoxious and irritating people on the planet. Like, I was cool with the Chiefs. Like, I come from a family of Bronco fans, keep in mind. But the Bang, not the Bengals, but the Chiefs, like, they were, like, we don't really like the Chiefs very much, but I was kind of cool with them. But then fucking Jackson Mahomes comes in and starts just being a disrespectful little fuckhead whose only personality trait is being related to Patrick Mahomes. Like, that's literally why he's gotten, like, the spotlight that he has is literally because he's related to a top-tier NFL quarterback who gets paid a half a billion dollars to do quarterbacking. And then this little shit just comes in and just starts being the most disrespectful little asshole ever. But, yeah, I don't get how... People can be a fan of Chiefs when those two are running around just making Patrick Mahomes look bad. Like, everybody likes Patrick Mahomes. He's a cool dude. Like, every interview I've seen of Patrick Mahomes, he's always just seemed like a really genuinely nice and chill person. He needs to do what Aaron Rodgers did and just cut his family out. Like, I know it's his fiance or wife or whatever, but get rid of Jackson at least. Like, he's the main problem. But... We don't have to worry about that right now anymore for this season because the Bengals have eliminated the Chiefs and the whole country is rejoicing. And it's, again, going back to what I said a minute ago, it's just baffling that the Bengals in two years are now going to the Super Bowl after being the worst team in the NFL. Like, I couldn't be happier. I could not be happier with the outcome of the AFC playoffs. The only thing I need now is for the Rams and 49ers game to finish. We know who they play. And I don't really know who to pick in that game. Or like who to root for, I mean. Just because I'm, I am I like both of them. I like both of those teams just because they're cool. And they both hate the Seahawks like I do. So, yeah, I really don't care who wins that game. But I got, I'm kind of partially biased towards the Rams. Just because of Cooper Cup. For those who don't know... Uh, I moved from, well, I grew up, I grew up in Eastern Washington, the east side of Washington state and about maybe 40, 50 minutes away from where I grew up is Eastern Washington university, which is where Cooper cup went to college. So seeing him come from little old Eastern Washington in the big sky conference and make an NFL roster and do what he's done is just incredible. So yeah, I am partially biased towards the Rams, but I really don't care who wins that game just because I'm cool with both of them. I'm not going to lie. I kind of hope the Bengals win the Super Bowl now. Just take it all the fucking way, you know? Like, just go. Like, you've beat the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game with probably one of the worst offensive lines in football. Like, just fucking take it home. Just win it all. Just give the people of Ohio something to be happy about. You know, they've been through a lot of disappointment recently. Uh, so that's really it for the sporting side of things. Again, uh, please show your support down for Carson down below. You know, it's not easy right now. Me and the boys are going through it right now. I'm sure his family is going through it also, discovering that their son was actually a dream stan. 
Uh, but yeah, we're. I'm just gonna move on. This is getting a little heavy for me to for me to talk about that. Next thing I want to talk about is actually a story. So this happened uh, last week. So I was driving around for work, right? Because I do some inspection stuff, and I'm going through this town in Kansas, and I realize that I can take a shortcut by cutting through this neighborhood. Just driving through a neighborhood, it skips like two stoplights. And it'll save me a few minutes, you know, because, you know, I'm a busy man. I'm trying to keep things going, keep it moving, you know, how's it going, keep it moving. And so I drive through this neighborhood and I see these, these three kids in this one yard. This is on a, just a work day, obviously, but there's these three kids standing in this yard and they're in like this circle, like, I guess, triangle shape esque thing. Because you can't really stand in a circle with only three of you. But there's these three kids. They're standing in a circle form thing. And they're all facing each other. These kids have to be probably 9 or 10 years old. Roughly. I didn't get a good look. Because again, I was going like 25 through the neighborhood. And I look at these kids like, oh, what are these kids doing on this nice day? And these fucking kids are doing the default dance. Like doing, they're doing fucking Fortnite dances at each other. They're... They're just standing in this circle and they're just looking at each other doing Fortnite dances. And I remember just driving by and being like, what the fuck? What is this? And then it hit me like, times really have changed. Like back in my day, I'd get your ass kicked in the neighborhood. Like neighbor kids would pull up for doing that and just beat the shit out of you. And here we are in these truly strange and unfortunate times where the main thing that kids like to do these days for fun when they meet up and play is do Fortnite dances in their yards. Like back in my day, we used to throw rocks at street signs. Like we were a simple people back then. But now these fucking kids are just absorbed in fucking Fortnite and all the cringe. And it's really hard to watch. You know, it's unfortunate how the times have changed for the worst society is getting soft and you know the biggest indicator of society getting soft is when our fucking kids are doing stupid shit like doing Fortnite dances like we did stupid shit when we were kids back in my day but at least it was cool shit you know but uh uh, i cringed so much when i saw that and i i haven't drove through a neighborhood since like i will take every red light every stop sign i can take now to avoid going through a neighborhood because I know that probably won't be the last time I see it if I ever do that again. So, yeah, uh, I talked about in the last episode that band kids always ruin everything. And now we have fucking city kids to add to that list. Yeah, thanks a lot, city boys. Really corrupting society, making us soft, aren't you? Uh, but that's, yeah, that's all the story is. It's just a day went from great to unfortunate, just through that site. And I hope I never have to see that again because uh, just a reminder of where society is and how soft and cringy we all are becoming. Yeah, I feel old. Like, I feel like an old man saying, back in my day, we used to, you know, like what I literally just did. And here I am doing that, but I'm only 22. But I feel old. I feel very old. Yeah, sooner or later, these kids are just going to be Getting yelled at to get off my yard, you know, with how old I'm feeling. But enough of that. Next thing I wanted to talk about is a bit of the gameplay side of things. Recently, I saw the new LEGO Star Wars game, the gameplay trailer, and holy shit, that game looks phenomenal. Like, it it genuinely looks... Like it was made by a group of people, a group of game designers and programmers who genuinely care about the franchise. When I learned of this game all those years ago, when it was announced, I was kind of worried about it because we were going through the Disney Star Wars period and how Disney just fucked everything up with Star Wars. It was made, the movies, the, not the movie, the, the recent trilogy The Rey and Finn trilogy, 7, 8, and 9, were made by people who clearly didn't understand Star Wars. And 
it just ruined the franchise. It did so bad. And then they blamed the poor, like, viewings of Star Wars on, like, straight white males. I read this whole article there. I was like, oh, well, people don't like to support female actors and whatnot. Like, no, we just don't support fucking terrible movies. But, pe- like, Disney is just ignorant to the fact that their movies suck. And they're ruining franchise after franchise just for the, sh- just for the sake of a shameless cash grab. And I was worried about that transitioning to Lego Star Wars because that is one of my favorite video game series ever. Like one in the original trilogy and Complete Saga. I played the shit out of Complete Saga. I still play the Complete Saga to this day every once in a while. Like the game slaps. The franchise slaps. The Lego games are so much fun. And I was worried about just the Lego Star Wars games being tainted by the taint from the movies and from the disney and everything and to be fair it is it is still too early for me to fully exclaim that these games are going to be phenomenal but just looking at the gameplay trailers the the game looks amazing like again i know it's still too early to tell and i'm not trying to jinx anything but just watching the gameplay and how much everything has changed it just makes me so happy being a diehard fan of the series and like they changed the uh lightsabers in the game like they have actually fully fleshed out lightsaber combat and there's like the combat in general in that game has just been really flushed out and it looks really good the graphics look incredible like this is a game that i'm happy got delayed just because of how well it turned out. I don't know how well it would have turned out if it didn't get delayed, if COVID didn't happen and whatnot. But I I always say that I never have a problem with a game being delayed if it results in a better product, which like nine out of 10 times it will result in a better product. But yeah, I, I've been really anxious for this game. I've really wanted it to come out ever since it was announced. And Delay after delay, I just told myself, hey, it, it's better for the game if it's being delayed instead of rushed. Like fucking Cyberpunk or The Last of Us 2. We see how well those games turn out when they're rushed. And so I, I am happy with the way this game looks. I haven't done like too much of an in-depth analysis on the game. It, Yeah, I just haven't had the time to do that. I've been busy with other projects and work and whatnot. But I don't really think I'd gain much more out of doing an in-depth analysis on the trailer because my opinion on the game cannot really get any higher. Like I couldn't like it anymore. And I don't think I didn't see anything in that trailer that I could look back on and make me say that I like it less. Like I know if I liked that game or if I liked that game, if I went back and I reviewed that trailer in depth, Like, I would still like it as much as I do now, but that's just because I couldn't like it anymore. I love this game and the way it looks, and I'm super pumped for April when it comes out. And, yeah. So, really excited for that game. And I hope, like, I know it's not going to, but I hope this game, like, sets a bar for companies like, hey, feel free to you know delay your games if you think it'll make a better product. People won't care because this game is going to sell. Like people are hyped for this game, and rightfully so. It, I just hope it starts that trend. It probably won't, just because game devs are so stubborn these days, especially the big triple A's with meeting that deadline and rushing the shit out of their games. But whatever. I'm just happy that this game looks like it's being cared for. And you can definitely tell that the people behind it care about the franchise as much as the people who are going to play it. Uh, also in gaming news, Legends Arceus released recently, and it was also leaked. It was leaked like a few days early, so people have been streaming it before the the official release date. And if you haven't seen my Why I Think Legends Arceus is Going to Be Bad podcast episode, go listen to it. I really like that episode, and it's actually my most popular video by a mile and a half, and I'm super proud of that video. But I'm just here to say that I was right. 
I called it. I successfully predicted everything. And I tried to warn people that this game was going to be bad. And and it is. Like, people were genuinely saying that when the game was first announced about the graphics, but, oh, they have plenty of time. It's going to get better. And I was like, well, no, this is fucking Game Freak. Like, what you see in that first trailer is final product. They're not going to change shit. Like, they never have and they never will. So if you think they're going to fix shit from the original trailer, you're fucking mistaken. So the game still looks like dog shit. And like I also predicted, the game is not a true open world. You just have it divided into sub areas. Also what I predicted. And I also predicted that the game would be boring as shit. Which I guess is a matter of opinion. But from what I've watched, I've watched most of the game. Just because, you know, I wanted to be able to have a full review. I'll probably do a full podcast review of it another time. I just don't feel like going truly in depth on that game. But I will say... Everything I watch of that game, it just bores the shit out of me. There's not a lot of substance. But I will say again, it is a step in the right direction. Like they are taking it in a good area with like boss fights and the open world-esque type of it. It's it's no doubt a step in the right direction, but I just have zero faith in Game Freak to develop it beyond this. Like they will probably expand on this a little bit in future entries. But again, at the end of the day, this is fucking Game Freak. And they're not going to, they're going to do the bare bones ass minimum because they know that it fucking sells. Ah, it's just frustrating. It's frustrating seeing a franchise that you've loved as a kid just turn out to be dog shit through just greed. And especially through the biggest franchise in just ever, like anything. They're they're a multi-billion dollar franchise and they're still afraid to spend a little money to go the extra mile on their products, it's it's unfortunate. But I don't care. I wasn't planning on playing the game. I didn't buy it because I knew it was going to be bad, and I'm still disappointed in the Pokemon company for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I still haven't touched that game since my series ended, and I don't really plan on it. I have a I pre-ordered both Diamond and Pearl, and I only finished Diamond for the Let's Play. I haven't even started Pearl. Like, I finished the game just bored as hell. And I'm so sad. I'm so sad about that. I was so hyped for that game. I knew it didn't look very good with the weird chibi style. And how it looked kind of like a mobile game. But I didn't expect it to play like a mobile game. Again, just disappointment everywhere for it. But yeah, that's... That's really all I have for this episode. Uh, A couple updates on things. One is the the big project that's coming. The big scripted video that I've been telling you about. I finally, finally, finally finished. I finally finished all the footage. I have all my footage. And I finished the script. I finished that today. So all that's left for me to do is do the voiceovers, which probably won't take too long like I have, I think. 14 different pieces that I have to voice over and then I got to take the the video clips that I got edit them all together and then put the voice over it it's not a whole lot of work it it'll just take time but I'm hoping early February it'll release I wanted to have it out this month in January but work and other things just have kept me busy this month and haven't left me with as much time as I wanted to to invest in this project. And I wasn't going to rush it. I wasn't going to rush it like a game freak game, but I wanted to, I wanted to make sure I had, you know, proper time to invest in this and in my script and everything. So it's almost done. I just got to find time to edit it and voice over it and whatnot. And it'll be out. I'm really excited for it. I don't want to reveal too much more than that about it. But yeah, it's it's coming and I'm super excited for it. It's not like it's coming like the dragons in Game of Thrones and they're going to be huge. Like, no, the this this video is actually coming and it's going to mark the start of a new series. Like it's not just a one-time video, it's the start of a new series. And it's a series that I've been really excited to make and I think it and this podcast will be kind of what the channel is about. 
mostly. I'm going to try to do uh, more Let's Plays if I can find the time, but I just need to find a game that I can play through. I might do a, a playthrough with Carson on something. He's talked about wanting to do something on a co-op for this channel. So we'll see. I'm not going to make any promises on that, but Let's Plays are coming. I just don't know when or what they're going to be on, but they're coming. I'm not done with it yet. And that's about it that I have. Um, once again, shout out to the Cincinnati Bengals for uh, saving us from the sight of the Mahomes family in the Super Bowl. Uh, you said Patrick. Patrick deserved it. Patrick doesn't deserve like his family, like just embarrassing him and the Chiefs like this. But I'm I'm being uh, I'm being a dead horse with that one. Uh, yeah. Again, that's about it. Thank you all for listening. This was a short episode, but last week's was a really long one. I was really happy with that one. I'm glad we didn't have any audio issues Pardon me, in that one. Um, yeah. Again, also, if you know any anyone who is a stan, especially a dream stan, you know, you know, reach out to them. They need our help. We need to we need to save more people. I don't want any more people to be hurt by being a dream stan. You know, we got to help them out, show them that there's more to life than just a YouTuber who stages his videos and is overall very cringy and weaponizes his fan base. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, we'll see you all next week for the next episode of the Josh Cast, episode 11. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Thank you for all for listening. Peace out and have a nice day.